Hi everyone, my name is Adiola Akintoye and welcome to Leadership Conversation with Adiola. This is a program where we um, I sit down with amazing, inspiring leaders to hear their leadership journey um, and to learn from them. And today I'm sitting with an amazing woman that I worked with um, in Water Aid, Olga. And um, Olga is an accomplished executive and non-executive leader um, in social purpose. And she's she has more than 30 years leadership experience and still counting. Um, she recently um, led the... Um, strategy development process at Waterade, and um, she co-wrote an article on our experience about that process and I'm sure we're going to learn a lot about it um, in this conversation. Um, Olga sits on the board of at least three um, organizations in both um, non-executive role and also as chair of the board. And recently, Olga has launched herself as a strategy um, consultant. And I'm sure we're going to um, learn more about that as well. So without much, much ado, I'm going to kickstart the conversation. Thank you so much, Olga, for giving me um, this time to have a conversation with me. How are you doing? Hello, Adiola. It's my pleasure. Uh, I'm doing very well. And thank you for this opportunity. Right. So, um, kickstarting it, what does leadership mean to you? Hmm. I think for me, leadership are about three things, Adiola. The first is co-creating an inspiring vision with one's team so that people can unite around and feel connected to a purpose. The second thing for me is setting clear expectations and parameters of how everyone's role contributes to that purpose. And the third thing is getting the best out of every team member by creating the right environment of trust and accountability. So that's what leadership is for me. Yeah, thank you. One of the things I can hear in your um, description of leadership is about people. You know, um, people at the center, around everywhere in leadership, um, can you tell us who is a, a leader that has inspired your leadership journey and why? Well, Adiola, I think it, different people I worked with, uh, some of them my managers, some of them my colleagues, some of them actually global leaders, inspired me in very different ways. And like a magpie, I, I stole with pride different bits from different people. For example, my first manager at Oxfam was selfless, nurturing and championed staff by stretching people and giving, giving them opportunities to take on new challenges. I worked with another with other two colleagues who were so wholeheartedly and passionately committed to excellence in serving the poorest communities in the world that I was humbled and it was so infectious. I had managers, one manager who was ahead of his time, courageous and visionary. And my last manager at Waterade showed me how to practice self-care and calmness in the face of adversity. So different people inspired me. But I think mostly I should say I'm inspired by people who of different genders, actually, who practice feminist leadership. And by that, I mean transparent, accountable, sharing power type of a leadership that is inclusive of others in decision making, whilst being also decisive and firm. And, you know, Adula, you can also learn a lot from uh, actually from poor leadership and its corrosive impact. Um, so it, it's also learning how not to be and what not to do. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely relate with that, that, you know, um, different people inspires in different way and it contributes to an holistic, you know, um, life journey. Um what has been one of the most challenging or difficult aspects of your leadership journey? You know, when, when you are in a senior leadership, it is very rare that simple black and white 
problems and issues come to your table? I think it's mostly those issues that are that have a lot of gray areas that are complex. And I think the most difficult challenge for me has been holding the tensions that are impossible to resolve. So there are tensions or there are issues that are impossible to resolve. You just need to hold them. And I think uh, being honest about about it is is quite quite challenging. I think the other thing is and it is about holding the right balance of both as a as a strategic leader, keeping an eye on the big picture, looking into the future, and also focusing on the urgency of now and not underestimating the importance of operational excellence. So these are, I think, the most challenging aspects of leaderships. I think, I think also um, finding the right balance between respecting people's individual circumstances and also the business needs of the organization. As as you can see, I think all of these are tensions to be to be held. Hmm. I just, I mean, that's quite interesting in terms of holding that tension because sometimes leaders are expected to have an answer to have a solution and sometimes it's not possible how do you hold that tension hmm. i think it's a very good question i think i start to argue with myself from first principles and i think one of the most important question i ask about is like is, is about why and and what will the person who this is supposed to serve say about it how will it be for them? And I think that that waiting, having the person who it, the, the this decision is supposed to serve at the front of of um, of, of, of my thoughts. Mm. That's really powerful. Always thinking about, you know, who this is intended for and how they will feel, and that would then help in terms of, you know, being comfortable with holding that tension. Excellent. So recently you shared your experience co-leading what it's new strategy development. And uh, based on that reflection, what are the key leadership lessons that stood out the most for you? Mm. Yeah, that's a it's a really good question. You know, Adiola, in the strategy development, uh, my co-lead, Will Garud, and myself we committed to a wholehearted and genuine, inclusive and participatory, participatory process. Mm -hmm. We really thought that the strategy needs to be owned and shaped by water rate staff. And when it's finished, there will be no surprises for anyone and people will own and th think it's their strategy. And so key leadership lessons um, learned from that process were being crystal clear about non-negotiable parameters what is up for grab and what it is not. And also being really transparent of what's going on, when, who is involved, when and who will make decisions mm. to create trust and also to enable people to see how they could participate and who and how they could influence. So that's one of the lessons. I think the other lesson I learned, which uh, it, it is sometimes counterintuitive, but trusting the wisdom of the crowd in making difficult choices. And I learned that by consulting people widely, but wisely, which means being really specific, what you are asking people, what the request is and why it is important, uh, excellent choices were made. And I think that was something that uh, I was really surprised by and also I think learned a lesson. And I think the importance for any leader in this kind of big strategic endeavors that are future defining agenda changing is to tap into the collective intelligence of the teams like really purposefully and it takes a lot of time uh, to do well but at the same time also stewarding moving the process forward so we don't get paralyzed and i think the leadership lesson is i was talking about holding tensions was about a holding the balance between the two and, and holding the tension between those two. So these are the three lessons that um, I want to single out. Yeah, fantastic. So um, how long did the process actually um, take you? Or to uh, the pro the, Yeah, the process um, it took about 16 months, Adiola. And I think what was important, that was another lesson, was that uh, we deliberately thought, de deliberately 
had a long process so that the whole organization can continue doing the, the work, delivering programs uh, out in the external world and the whole organization doesn't get paralyzed. And so the efficiency of the strategy process was secondary to the efficiency of how the whole organization functions. Right, right. That's that's quite interesting. Um, I've been in a role um, where um, a, a, a similar change process um, mm -hmm. um, got kick-started, but the experience was that it took so long because of the consultation aspect of it. And But what you were saying about you know, really setting clear and transparent parameters um, or uh, setting the approach right from the start and also being clear around the the parameters, the, you know, what is open for discussion, what is not negotiable and who makes the decision, you know, then helps shapes, you know, how, you know, the consultation happen. Um, you you spoke about the trusting the wisdom of the crowd, and that that really struck me. I was like, hmm, that is quite interesting. Can you would you like to say a little bit about what you mean by trusting the wisdom of the crowd? What what um I think we in the process what we thought and what we and the way we designed it is that the whole organization. All the people, uh, 1,200 people in 50 and more teams, need to have at least three touch points where they could input and make choices about the most vital, the most important strategic decisions, which is what the organization needs to focus on and how. Yeah. And uh, I think those three touch points, um, so, so we had a consultation um, designed in that way so that important choice making and polling happens at those three touch points and then we were also very clear that uh, the weighting of uh, the decision making will be skewed towards the country country program country country team um, opinions and what happened is is um, I think people really made decisions they made tough decisions they made hard decisions and I think they made very right calls uh, at the end of it. It wasn't easy, but I think they did, and it was very impressive. Oh, that that is great. Um, I I guess that at the end of it, people could recognize their own views in exactly. The, the exactly, exactly, and and even if people don't agree with everything, I think they would uh, have known why the decision was made. They would have he felt heard. And also they, they would know why the decision was made. Mm, yeah. And maybe for the benefit of viewers that or anybody listening to this that is wondering who is Water Aid, um, do you want to give us a little bit context of Water Aid and the structure? Because it's not just one organization and the same mm. thing is actually a federation and with its own unique governance challenges. Do you want to? Yes, yes. Uh, so so WaterAid is a global organization and it's comprised of seven members, uh, WaterAid UK, Japan, uh, Sweden, US, Canada, India. Uh, and uh, it works in 25 countries uh, globally and uh, it has a very elegant uh, singular mission, which is water sanitation and hygiene. Uh, to make it a normal part of everyone who doesn't have access to it. And uh, in terms of governance, I think in the strategy process, we had to deal with uh, all the seven boards of all the members. We had to deal with all the 25 countries, all the um, teams in, 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 different, um, in different countries, uh, based in different countries and in, in different members, as well as uh, a Water Rate International Board. So I think it's, it's a complex governance structure, but I think the engagement, proactive engagement with the board was uh, was very impactful, actually. Very, very impactful. And it added a lot of value to, to the process. Mm. Uh, so it was a really complex process. 
Um, and one of the things you said in your write-up as well is that having the process led by people who already uh, who are already well known um, widely um, across the organization and outside, using outside expertise sparingly, with the sort of structure that WaterAid has, to what extent, you know, um, on reflection, having you know um, key people be part of that process in in such a unique, you know, complex governance process, how how did that help? the process itself and the outcome. Uh, can you repeat the question? Uh, are you asking about uh, how it helps to have people from in internally to, to co-lead yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. In, yeah. Your, in your write-up, you mentioned how, you know, yeah. the um, process led by people already well-known in the yeah. organization. Yeah, yeah, the, the, uh, okay. Adila, I think so. One one of the things that's important, and I'm talking when when I talk about the strategy development, I also talk talk about the mistakes and the challenges. So yes. uh, I don't want to sugarcoat that everything was wonderful. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think what one of the key lessons was and is that strategy development is a political process, and it needs to work with the unique culture of the organization. And uh, very interestingly, you, you work both within the culture and also against it uh, within the culture because you work with the best bits of the culture and against it because you also challenge some, some of the things. And I think having people who understand the politics, who understand the organization is very critical in that political process. And it is also important to, to bring in external expertise purposefully and sparingly uh, to to make sure that those uh, think pieces, those ideas, or though the expertise that we don't have internally are also brought in, but I think it it was very helpful to to have uh, two very to firstly to co lead it with people with different skills, and uh, also people who are well known to the organization, understand its politics mm -hmm. and uh, its challenges as well. Mm. One of the things I'm I'm taking from from your point is the importance of culture and working within the culture of of an organization or a group. Mm -hmm. You know, you are you know one is leading such complex you know um, process mm -hmm. and making sure that the the you know key peoples are involved in the process itself right, right from the beginning. And uh, now you mentioned some challenges and. Um, as we always ask leaders, mm -hmm. um, can you share a mistake, you know, um, that you've made um, as a leader in your mm -hmm. journey, which has significantly impacted or contributed to shaping your leadership approach? And um, what are you doing differently as a result of that experience? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know, I think in the in the early phases of my leadership journey, I um, had a pattern of two erroneous kind of behaviors that affected important relationships and business outcomes negatively. One was prematurely jumping into conclusions without full facts or evidence. That's one mistake I made. And I think the other one was being opinionated uh, about something at the onset of a big endeavor, like having my views, um, strong views. And I'm really grateful for um, people, um, my colleagues who gave me honest and constructive feedback. And th those lessons, that feedback changed, uh, profoundly changed the way I lead, I led and I lead, uh, which is, uh, I think it, it uh, taught me to be genuinely more curious uh, getting on top of my facts, asking questions to uncover the evidence, and also being open to diverse and opposing views whilst having my own. I'm not saying I, I didn't have my views, but I think listening to different views made my decisions and my leadership richer and much better. Wow, fantastic. Um, the importance of having um, getting feedback, seek, seeking feedback, and also being open to receiving that feedback and I guess having people around um, the leader that can actually give feedback because sometimes you, 
people are so scared to give their leaders feedback, you know, but having people who are courageous enough um, to to give feedback and seeing feedback as as an enriching um, um, event in a way that shapes one's leadership. Yeah, thank you, thank you for that. Um, what would be your top three advice to emerging leaders? Um, as uh, or especially people that want to become effective as leaders. Hmm. I would say uh, to that person, your role as a leader is to ask good, catalytic, thought-provoking questions, listening genuinely and with curiosity, and also being really and practically helpful to people like having value adding suggestions on big item strategic issues. That's one advice I would give. I think the other one is, is providing clear parameters of what good looks like, uh, what the expectations are, and then trust people to get on with it, get on with their jobs within those parameters. And the last one is uh, don't be afraid of tall poppies. Don't be afraid of assembling a team of people who are more skilled, who are stronger in many ways and in many aspects than you are, and then lift and elevate them and empower them to get the best out of them. I think that's what will make you a strong leader, a good leader, and a well-performing one. And the last one, Adiola, I would say focus and prioritize. Choose what is vital to get right and do well and focus on it. Hmm. Really powerful. Thank you. I think I will look back at this um, conversation myself and take some really good notes on some of these tips. And thank you so much. I, I could read, you know, your heart for people um, in the conversation. You know, also evidence in terms of the, the way you did the strategy process, putting people um, at, at the center. And, and you talk about trust as well, trusting people as well. Um, is is really important. Um, thank you so much for um, taking the time to share your thoughts on leadership. And I wish you all the very best in this new season of your life, uh, exciting season, I'm sure. Yeah, and yeah, we'll be um, conversing um, again, I'm sure. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Adiola. Thank you. Thank you.